What do you think? I think we're dead meat. Real dead meat. You're dead meat! Go ahead and laugh, you guys. The final final little pass is a business. A dead meat. Hey everybody, welcome to an episode of What's Your Favorite Scary Movie, a long dormant series that I haven't touched in two years after I did a single episode with Foundflix. I figured now that we're all social distancing and in self-quarantine, this would be a good series to do because I can talk to people from the isolation of our own homes and apartments and talk to them about their favorite scary movies. So for this first episode back, I'm going to be talking to a longtime friend of mine and friend of the channel, Brizzy Voices, aka Anna Brisbane. Hey, Anna. Hello, James. So good to have you. Yes, thank you so much. And I hope you're doing well in your isolation with your wonderful dog, Remus. Oh yeah, so many cuddles. He's all about it. So Anna, you're not known for horror movies at all. You have more of like a Harry Potter <laughs> fandom and just more general pop culture geekdom type yeah, thing. Yeah, definitely more of a geekdom cartoons to Harry Potter sort of spectrum. My name is pronounced <laughs> I'm always surprised by how many horror movies you're familiar with and you've seen. Like you mentioned that you saw Mandy. That's a pretty deep cut for someone who's not in the genre. Yeah, I don't know. Halloween time came around and we were just looking up like, what are the best horror movies that are available on streaming services right now? And Mandy was on a list and we we're like, Nicolas Cage, let's do it. <laughs> he was very Nicolas Cage in that movie. <laughs> Even though, you know, it's not your forte, it sounds like you are a fan of horror movies. Yeah, definitely. If I'm interested in the concept, I'm very down to see it. I don't find myself to be very scared by horror movies at all. Video games, I'm the biggest pansy in the world. I'm scared of something jumping up. <laughs> it's terrifying. <laughs> but horror movies, it feels distant enough that I can feel less afraid. Yeah. And more just like laugh at other people getting scared because it's a fun time when just like a whole room is like, ah! <laughs> <laughs> I love that scare laugh. I do it all the time, especially in the theater. And there are a few moments in the movie that you picked for your favorite horror movie that definitely get some scare laughs. You chose The Ring. Yeah, it's a weird choice, I feel like. Oh, I don't no, know. I, I don't think so because you, you also joined us for the podcast about two years ago now to talk about The Ring. And we talked about in that episode episode how for people of our age, late 20s, early 30s, like this this movie is very memorable because it came out at a time when we were perhaps being allowed to watch more movies like this. And so it really sticks with you. Exactly. It's the first scary movie that I can remember seeing. I was definitely afraid of horror movies before I watched them. The idea of horror movies, of being scarred by horror movies. And then I finally watched them and watched stuff like The Ring and I just became too invested. <laughs> this is definitely the horror movie that I have seen the most. I'm sure it's not the best horror movie I've seen, but for some reason it's attached itself into my heart from like sixth grade and drawing all the things in my planners, drawing chairs, drawing flies, drawing Samara hair faces, having long dark hair and just doing this all the time when I was little. Like it was just a big part of me discovering horror. That's exactly what I want this series to be. It's not about what you think the best horror movie is. It's the one that most personally resonates with you. And I just love exploring why different movies resonate so strongly with different people. So I know that The Ring kind of touched off a whole little subgenre of horror in the early 2000s, like these American remakes of J-horror. Did you like The Ring enough to seek out those other movies? Yeah, I saw The Grudge and I definitely had a similar experience of being in middle school and everyone's talking about the jawbone and the uh, noise and just being spooked by it, but I never attached to it thematically in the same way that the ring really burned itself into my brain. So the ring was kind of a singular thing for you. Yeah. What jumped out to you the first time you watched it, if you can remember your first time watching this movie? I don't remember exactly where I was the first time I saw it. It's just the image of Samara, this like very iconic, creepy girl in a white dress with long, dark hair. And I think I just related to that because I'm like, I'm a little girl with long dark hair. I can be creepy, that's fun. I like <laughs> scaring my friends. 
So I think I, that was the first thing that I related to on that. I think it just has a lot of very iconic and memorable imagery. I mean, that's kind of the whole point, right? With the video is like these images and Samara burns images into your brain. Everything kind of weaves together and makes sense, even though like, what does a chair have to do with a horse, with maggots, with centipedes, with this creepy girl down a well? Who knows, but like somehow it works and for some reason, I latched onto that. I think the tape itself, which is obviously the most infamous part of this movie, the tape that you watch and seven days later you die. Seven days. <laughs> I think they do such a good job. Like you said, disconnected images, but making them so creepy. All of them are memorable, like the giant bug crawling around. I love the long overhead shot of all the people squirming together, and you think they're maggots at first, and maybe it is they maggots, are at, maggots first. at first. Yeah, and then yeah, yeah. I think it changes, and I'm not even like confirmed in my brain even now whether they are actually supposed to be people or not. I mean, they're such quick flashes and they all stand out even if it's on kind of like a subliminal level. Yeah. Like you don't even realize what you're seeing. Yeah, I love that. I love <laughs> it. It's just kind of like trusting your art to like affect people in ways that they don't understand. Fun. Yeah, it is. I find a lot of times when I'm rewatching this movie, I forget Rachel is a thing. <laughs> yeah, <know>? right. <laughs> I, I start the movie with Katie and Becca and them dealing with the video and the ring and the story, and I'm like, oh yeah, oh Samara, ooh, and then it flashes to like Aiden and Rachel, and I'm like, oh yeah, this is about them. I forgot about that part. Definitely don't really care about Rachel. <laughs> <laughs> Not Rachel. I really like Naomi Watts in this though. I love her performance and the journey you take with her is so good because, you know, naturally she's gonna be skeptical of when she first hears about a tape that kills people. But I think just the shot of her after she watches the tape for the first time, which is the first time we get to see it all at once. So we get to see all this creepy imagery and then it cuts to her and she doesn't even say anything, but the look on her face is just like, oh, I messed up. Yeah, <laughs> and when the eyeballs just like dilate, it's like, oh. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, you've seen it now. <laughs> You're in trouble. It's so funny, though, that I think for a lot of people who love this movie, that it's probably the same case where if they haven't seen it in a while, they might forget the kind of extraneous plot devices because a lot of this movie is kind of crime mystery, like she's doing an investigation, looking for clues, and that can all fall by the wayside and you're still left with a really memorable movie just in the things that stand out. Yeah, or I guess the stuff that they kept from Ringu. Oh yeah, the Japanese original, which I still have yet to see, unfortunately. Besides the tape and Samara, what are some other scenes that really stand out to you? The horse scene, I have always been deeply affected by animal deaths in movies. Like I cried the first time I saw Shrek and that bird pop. <laughs> Like that affected me. I always close my eyes for the horse scene. I'm still not 100% sure if I've seen the whole thing in its entirety without looking away, but I'm pretty sure I've seen every bit individually at some point in my rewatches, but I can't watch the whole thing. It hurts. It does hurt. It looks like it hurts. Yeah, it hurts a little bit. Cause like he doesn't even get a clean jump over the boat. He like clips his legs and then falls and hits the boat. And I think there's even like a strand of drool that comes out of the horse's mouth on his no, way down. No, I did not look that carefully. <laughs> I don't know. I don't want to know. And then, yeah, just the <sighs> blood coming out after it gets caught up underneath the boat. It's very traumatizing. Other scenes that really stuck out to me were like the dad moments when he shows up and there's that flash from the lighthouse and he's holding this, like, it looks like a meat hook, but I feel like it's some sort of horse hook he's for some reason. all about the reason. horses, You know, yeah. it goes onto fences or something, but it's just spooky because it's like, oh, he's going to get her, but really he's just going to fill himself up in a bathtub. <laughs> Oh my God, <laughs> wow. Also, I think one of the best horror screams moments that I can think of is like Naomi Watts reacting to that. Her just freak out when he's zapping himself and her <laughs> and running into Noah and freaking out then. I feel like he calms her down a little too fast, but her initial freak out is exactly what any human would do 
and it's great. It reminds me of the other flashing intense moments in this movie that are still effectively scary to me. Like when in the beginning, it's when Becca opens the door and it's just like the TV and the push in on her kind of weird frame rate. So it looks all jittery. It's so scary. And then of course, the biggest scare of the movie probably is that one when Naomi and her sister are talking and she's like, I saw her. I saw her face. <laughs> <laughs> the head tilt down. That face as a child gets burned into your brain because you don't get a chance to prepare. Yeah, yeah. there's no preparation and then it's gone before you can even fully process what's happening. So it's like, what did I just see? And, and in a lot of cases like that, I would say, oh, because it's such a quick flash, the thing that you end up having in your memory is much worse than what you actually saw. But in this case, I think it's actually pretty terrifying what you actually see. Yeah. Definitely. And they do the same thing at the end with Noah. When she finds his body in real life, you don't actually get to see his face. But later, they show you a flash of what she saw. And it's, again, just this really good makeup. So sneaky. And that scene at the end, of course, iconic. I love that it's like a 10 a.m. Climax horror scene. Oh yeah, that's so rare. Just in a sunny apartment room. So good, so spooky. Both of them stepping on the glass is very like ingrained in my brain as like a love moment. Her crawling out of the TV with the water, everything, yes. Yeah, you're right. There's so few horror movies that are comfortable trying to have a scare during broad daylight because it's so much harder to scare someone when they have the security of day. But this movie yeah. doesn't care and it's still so scary. Her coming out of that TV is obviously Obviously so iconic, it's referenced everywhere. Scary Movie 3 was basically all about the ring and signs. Yeah, that's why I loved Scary Movie 3. Because it was the first scary movie that I saw that I had actually seen the movies it was referencing. Yeah, I feel like once you make it into a scary movie or a spoof movie, like that's how you know your movie made it. Cindy! The TV's leaking! How do you feel about Aiden, the little man inside a child's body? Oh my God. <laughs> Rachel. <laughs> they like kind of spend the whole movie building him up as an authority figure. Like you trust the things that he says so that at the end when she tells him, don't worry, I saved Samara and he gets immediately alarmed and it's like, why would you do that? I got so scared when that happened. They do a really good job of that, huh? They're like, he's a little man. He knows he's turned from her. He's talked to her. It sounds like he knows what's going on. If he's freaked out, we need to be freaked out. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God, she screwed up. She freed <laughs> Samara. What does that mean? Don't you understand, Rachel? I looked up that the little kid actor who now works at the House of Representatives as legal counsel to different committees and stuff. What? Yeah, that kid's working in the deep state. I'm just imagining him still as that child, but working that job, because that makes he sense. He could, in my yeah. Brain. Just putting on his little tie, going to work at Congress. <laughs> yeah. I asked you to come up with three trivia questions for me about your favorite movie. And this one might be a difficult one for me because I haven't covered the ring on a kill count. So I haven't done like deep dive research into it. So I'm yes. going to try my best here. What do you got for me? First one is just standard memory thing. Okay. It's very simple. What newspaper does Rachel work for? Oh shit. Is it the Seattle Times? Close. Seattle Post? Uh, the Seattle Post Times. Seattle Post Intelligencer. Oh, Intelligencer. I was never going to be able to guess that. Shit. Hey. Next question <laughs> is, I'm going to give you four sequences from the tape. I okay. need you to put them in the right order. Ooh, this is a very good and very difficult one. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Ocean of blood, horse eye, spinning chair, and Anna falling over a cliff. Okay. Not me, her mom. Yes. <laughs> Ocean of blood is first, I'm pretty sure. The problem is I don't remember the horse eye. I remember the horse on the shore being dead, but the horse eye, the chair I know that we see earlier, and then later we see it spinning. And then I think in Scary Movie 3, they have someone sitting on it and throwing up from being sick of <laughs> it spinning. Anna falling off the cliff I know is near the end. So my my guess is going to be ocean of blood, horse eye, Anna falling off the cliff, and chair spinning. Ooh. 
so close. Damn it. <laughs> Switch the last two. Oh, you got it. Man, I thought that might be it. But all right, that was a good one. Yeah, half half credit for sure. Thank you. <laughs> this one is outside of movie knowledge. Okay. But very fun fact in my brain. The tree mm -hmm. with the fiery red leaves. It's a fake tree, a prop tree, but it's made to look like a Japanese maple. What is the fruit of a Japanese maple called? Oh man, is it a uh, dragon fruit? I don't know. Nope. Uh, I, I don't know. Samara. No way, really? Yeah. That is a great fact. Yeah, right? I didn't know maple trees would have like fruits. I think it's more like the technical term of fruit. Oh yeah. A blossom that turns into something else sort of thing. Okay. I don't know if you can eat it. <laughs> <laughs> don't eat Samara, don't recommend it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it'll be all soggy and taste like well water. Mm -hmm. yeah. The fingernails. <laughs> oh God, the fingernails in the well water. It's like well water's already gross. And now you got <laughs> fucking fingernails floating around in it and hair. And hair. Oh, uh. wet hair is the worst. <laughs> <laughs> Especially from corpses. Uh, do not like. All right. Well, thank you, Anna, so much for joining me remotely to talk about your favorite horror movie, which is a real good one. You keep saying that you think you should have picked something that's like better, but I think The Ring is well regarded. I think it's just so corny. I guess. I don't think it's corny. I think it's scary. Okay. Yeah. I just feel like little girl, like down a well, like blah, 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 blah. It's got some funny shots. I feel like it's easy to make fun of. So I feel, I guess, a little insecure about it, but mm -hmm. I love it in my heart. Yeah. I feel like it'd be like picking Blair Witch in that it's something that's been referenced and parodied so many times that I can understand feeling like maybe it's not a serious horror movie, but no, it's a, it's a really good one. Thank you. <laughs> we love to validate our friends. Uh, I don't know. I guess I'll just say to anyone watching, assuming this is coming out in a timely manner, keep social distancing and, you know, let's flatten that curve. This sucks, but uh, you can still find ways to talk to your friends. Skype! FaceTime! We're having fun. Don't watch VHS tapes, but watch horror movies. That's right. Maybe avoid, you know, the unmarked VHS tapes, but other than that. Yeah. Although Samara does eventually graduate to, like... YouTube, so we might just be screwed. Is that what happens in the new one? Rings? Yeah, on oh, wow. What a yeah. story. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll have to save that one for another time. Hey! But yes, thank you so much, Anna. I hope that uh, you and your loved ones are safe. And yeah, thanks for talking to me about the ring. Thanks, James. Miss your house. Yeah, you'll be back soon. Don't worry. Hopefully. All right. Well, thanks everyone for joining me for revitalizing this old series. What's your favorite scary movie? Thanks, Anna, for being my first guest uh, on its return and be good people.